Hey everybody, it's me. And today I wanted to share with you a cool little trick that I learned in Glide as to how to target specific items inside of an array in Glide. And there's lots of ways to create arrays in Glide. I'll show you a couple of those ways and then how you can actually sp uh, target individual items within those arrays uh, by using a couple of columns. So here, let's get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new app here. We'll just call it um, Array Magic. And it'll be just from a glide table. And we're not gonna use anything fancy in here. So we're not gonna use a user profile or anything just for this. Um, and so let's come up with a few ways we can do so there are a few ways you can create array columns in Glide. Uh, the first way is in Google Spreadsheets where you can name your columns in a particular way uh, with a, some sort of keyword followed by a number starting with one and then going up two, three, four, and so forth. So I could have like image space one, image space two, image space three, as three separate columns and then Glide recognizes that as image array column. Uh, you can create an array column in Glide by using a join text or split text. Um, and you can also create an array by using a multiple relation and then doing a lookup off of that. So for example, here I have a list of, um, let's say projects. And then within those projects, let's create a list of tasks. All right, so for projects, we might have like project one, and then project two, then project three. And then within our tasks, maybe we have um, the name of the project we're working on and then the task. So task one. So there's project one. And then here we have task one, task two, task three and task four, for example. All right, and so then one way we can create a, an array column is by doing a multiple relation. So I could do a relation to tasks, where I'll relate the project name, oops, name to the tasks project. I'm gonna match multiple. And you see here I have a multiple relation. Um, and then to do, uh, create an array value of this, we can do a lookup. So we could do a lookup of the tasks, this relation to tasks and then um, name of the tasks, let's say. All right, so this is one way to create an array column. Uh, the second way is to do a, uh, let's say a join and then a split. So I could do something like a join list of projects I can join all of the projects together and then split them. So I'll say split projects. And so I'll split the join projects by the comma, all right? That's another way to create an array. Um, and you can tell that it's an array because you'll see the values in there inside of these lightly shaded gray ovals. Right? Um, you see this is not an array column. This is a re multiple relation because the, uh, the border of these are kind of have an outline. They're not filled in with this gray column. All right, so these are two different types of arrays. And what's neat is that you can target specific items within that array by using a single value column. Let me show you what I mean. If I create a new column, and I'm gonna call this um, single task. And this is a single value. And I can get the first item, let's say, from, and you see that it recognizes both my tasks lookup as well as my split projects column. With both of these were the array columns that, within this sheet here. And if I select one of these, like for example, the task, you see I can get the first value in that array because I'm selecting the first, right? I can also get the last value in that array. I can get a random value within the array 
Okay, or I can select which position, which item from start or from end. So I do from start, for example, now row zero, that means the first item in the array. If I change this to one, okay, you'll see that now it's the second item in that array. And row two will be the third item in that array. And row three would be the fourth item in that array. So you see that this row, whether it's zero, one, two, or three, will let it be switch between the various values of this array. Now what's neat is that Sure, I can type this value in, but I can also select a value from one of my columns here. So let's play around with this a little bit. What if I create a column and call this um, task switcher, right? And within this, this is gonna be just a number column. And I'll make it user specific. And we'll start it with um, the number zero. Okay. Well, now I can use this column to specify which task I want to view. So instead of typing in a number here, I can do row and then my task switcher. All right, so now it's at zero. But if I choose one, you see it switches my task here and so forth. Right? And so um, we can set our minimum and maximum values as well. Our minimum will always be zero. That will always be the first item in the array. And maybe we don't want to go over the amount of items. So I can do a count. So let's do a, a roll up. We'll call this task count. And I'll do a roll up of um, the relation to tasks name. Uh, sorry, relation to tasks. Yeah, name is fine, I guess. And you just get the count. So you'll know that I should never go over four because I only have four tasks. But remember, this is, I really need this to be the number three because if I choose four, I get nothing, all right? Uh, three is actually the last value because we're starting with zero. So I'll call this like task max, and this would be a math column of my task count minus one. All right, so my min will be zero, my max will be three. We can play around with this a little bit now. So let's say I have a details view of my projects and I want to swipe between my various tasks, right? Or maybe just uh, select between my various tasks. Um, I could do something kind of fun like with a button bar where I could say uh, previous task and then next task. Right? Where um, we'll create some conditions for this. So like we're next task, I'll do like an increment or a decrement of my task switcher value from zero and three. Now we don't wanna go less than zero and we don't wanna go more than three. So we'll need to have some conditional actions. And the only way to do that is through a create new action here. So I could do something like if, task switcher is uh, greater than zero, then we can increment our task switcher by negative one. Okay. Otherwise, the button will do nothing. It'll just maybe just do a reshuffle or something. Uh, I think if you use a button bar, it'll I think it'll make the button inactive, but that's okay. We'll do a shuffle order here instead. All right, so this would be decrement, save. And then in the next task, we'll create an action. And we'll say if the task switcher is less than the task max, we'll increment our task switcher by one. Otherwise, we will reshuffle again. And this will be increment. Save. All right, and then we can display our task through um, that single value. All right, so right now we should be able to cycle through that. See, my next task does nothing because I'm on the last task. 
my previous task should let me cycle all the way back down to task one. And when I get to task one, then that's it. So I can here I can switch between my previous tasks. All right, so I don't have to do any sort of fancy relations, right? Um, I don't have to relate what number this is, um, and yeah, I don't have. To, so this is basically a way for me to uh, cycle between the array and not necessarily have to create any sort of fancy logic with relate relating this user specific value to the task sheet. I'm just cycling between this item. Now, if I wanted to, I could also then start pulling in some items. So I can do a relation between my single task. So relation to uh, task, singular, where I can relate my uh, single task to the actual task lists. And I can start pulling in some values, right? I can do um, what the task image is maybe Right, so if we had images to our task, you could do that. So let's just pick whatever Glide provides for us. Right, and now I can display that image as we cycle through them. Right, so here's my next, next task, next task, and next task. All right, so some fun things you can do with arrays and single value columns. Now that single value columns can target the array column. All right, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out in the comments below or at Twitter, which is at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.